Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Infinite Lagrange, that other space game made by NetEase. Now in today's video I want to talk to you all about the S Levy 9 Heavy Torpedo Escort Corvette. This is a new addition to the game, it has just dropped into the public boxes. I have managed to grab myself one of these, I did a lot of testing on the previous stuff where you could buy them from the trade stations and outposts, and I have been saying for a while, how come Jupiter Industries doesn't get a Corvette? Now they have one, and it's freaking amazing. So in today's video we're going to be looking at this Corvette, talking about what makes it tick, is it worth trying to get hold of, and if you're one of the lucky few who manages to get one, how do you use it? So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting like on it. I know I ask this a lot, but especially for things like Infinite Lagrange content, please hit like. The more of you hit like on this kind of stuff, the more it spreads it out across YouTube and the more of this kind of content I can make because I've got a better audience for it, you know? So please do spend those few seconds just to hit that like button and eventually I will shut up about it. If you enjoy Infinite Lagrange as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and of course you can always check out my Patreon and Redbubble merchandise store if you want to go the extra mile to keep me doing what I do. Anyway, all that said and done, let's talk about the S Levy 9 Heavy Torpedo Escort Corvette. This Corvette is a beast. I hope I've made that point pretty well already. It really is something absolutely magnificent. I've been saying for a long time that Jupiter Industries needs a Corvette. It's a little bit of a weird looking one, I won't lie, but it is a absolute powerhouse. So let's have a look at its stats first of all. So firepower, you're looking at an anti-ship firepower basic of 4,930. I have then obviously enhanced this up from there. It has no anti-aircraft potential whatsoever, so you are going to need to have some air defense around as well. I personally recommend some spores, especially if you're going for a Jupiter Industries flavored fleet, which I like to do, or things like sand drakes. Any good anti-air fighter will help keep this thing alive just that little bit longer. It also has remarkably respectable siege damage, 1,820 basic. That is not a small amount of siege damage for a Corvette. That is actually more than a lot of cruisers put out, just to give you an idea of how much of a punch this thing actually has. Now, if we go across to its combat roles here and have a look, you'll see that a Comet Escort Corvette series developed by Jupiter Industries are equipped with three airborne torpedo launchers capable of striking enemy targets at close range. The torpedo warheads are specially designed to have outstanding destructive power against kinetic energy armor. The torpedoes used are airborne versions of the supernova anti-ship torpedoes, which are extremely powerful with limited quantities and therefore the escort should return regularly to get loaded. Its roles are against large ships and superior firepower, and of course its corvette, an aircraft unit capable of sustained combat. Now, interestingly enough, the actual rankings they give it, they only give it an A for its anti-ship capability. I strongly believe this should be an S. The th stuff this ship does is just bonkers. The Siege, definitely, that is an A. Outstanding Siege firepower. And of course, you can see A on survivability because it's got good dodge attacks. It's not in the field for long, which is considered a downside for it as well. However, it is strategic capability of C because it does cost a decent amount to actually manufacture. So let's have a look at its support systems. First of all, we'll go into the boring old armor, generic fuselage and generic aircraft armor. There's not much going on here. Standard increased ship HP and increases en enemy weapon lock on time. This is actually quite a nice little thing here, this thruster masking. The fact that it takes longer for the enemy to lock on, as far as I'm aware, is pretty unique to this Corvette. I've not seen this on any other ship, and that's a lot of, a lot of things that this ship does are pretty unique to it. So that's one that you might decide you want to go for, especially if you're finding that they are getting sort of knocked out of the sky a little bit faster than you might like. There's another skill as well that will help with that in just a moment, but masking your thrusters so that it takes longer for the opponent to lock on and thus longer before they start hitting you is definitely a start. If we then go into the propulsion system, however, into the Corvette Vector engine, you'll see we have some other really nice abilities here as well. Increasing ship evasion is a key one there for two of those, and we have the shortened BAT for the primary weapon of aircrafts by 4%. What this actually means is pretty confusingly worded, but it means that basically it flies faster. That doesn't help it in regards to how much damage it takes, it doesn't make it any harder to hit per se. What it does do is it means it goes from the launching ship to the target ship faster, offloads its payload, and then returns quicker, which means it has less time in space. 
This is an advantage for it. And as nice as it is to go for these evasion, I honestly think that this BAT reduction is probably one of the best things that you can do for this because it's a big, healthy bump. It's 2% evasion for each of these. This is a 4% reduction to the time that it's in space. That is huge. And it just means the amount of damage that it can, uh, it can take is reduced. Think about it this way, DPS, damage per second. That is how much damage something takes per second, right? Therefore, if you are out for fewer seconds, you take less damage. It's as simple as that. And I really, really rate that system. I use that a lot on the testing one. You'll notice that when I come back out here, it says I've only got six in service, despite the fact that I've actually got eight. That's because two of those are the ones from the uh, the tech event, um, where you could buy them from a nearby trading post and try them that way. And the ones from the trading post did have that upgrade, the ones that I had at least. Um, and I found that actually it was really survivable. They didn't die. The ones without that die quite quickly. Now, of course, we can enjoy all the survivability and speed and evasion and things of an escort corvette like this, but the heavy torpedo part of the name is pretty cool too, right? So let's talk about those. So we then have the Supernova M83210M type torpedo bombardment system, which is just a badass name to start off with. 5,325 damage per minute. That is a lot of damage. Prioritized targets are large ships. So if we open up the thing here, you'll see it goes for carriers, battle cruisers, cruisers, and auxiliary ships first of all. Now this means that if, like me, you use the Jaeger a lot, you don't need to worry about the fact that the Jaeger has a powerful ability that allows it to prioritize targets against carriers. These are going to go for the carriers anyway, and they are freaking deadly at it, as we'll see in just a moment. It's also got that siege fire. You can see all the other stats here, etc, etc, etc. Nothing particularly nice, you know, none of these sort of anti-explosives and things like that that punch through shields as basic. Um, it's just a straight-up torpedo system, but I'd be lying if I said it was just a straight-up torpedo system because we have this dive toss. This is just absolutely bonkers. The first two rounds of attacks by a primary weapon towards enemy's capital ships will gain physical armor penetration effects after battle begins. Now, it says capitals. It does include super capitals as well. This includes things like battle cruisers and carriers. So the fact that this goes straight after carriers and it has physical armor penetration for those first two shots just does absolutely crippling damage. The amount of pain that that puts out, I simply cannot underestimate. It is, it's so, so powerful. And that is absolutely, especially if you've got like heavy armored targets, things with physical armor, you absolutely want this right out of the gate because it just ignores their armor, goes straight through it and just deals massive amounts of damage. Beyond this as well though, you get the usual setup here. You can see I go straight away for hit rate for against cruisers and higher class ships. Again, this is prioritizing those higher ships first of all. As you'll see later on, there are some others around, down here as well that's just all missile hit rate and torpedo hit rate going up there. Um, ignore the missile hit rate, this fires torpedo, so it's 2% hit rate for each level there of lock-on radar enhancement. Or you could go for the full 3% per level here for large target correction. I would go for this one first because most of the targets it's going to be going after are cruisers or larger, right? If you're using this against destroyers and frigates, I kind of feel like there's a better ship out there for you. That better ship, by the way, I've covered in previous videos. Absolutely, um, this is designed for going after the big boys in the fleet. And then, of course, we have things like standard damage set up. There's a couple of these, quite a few sort of damage weapon, uh, weapon damage ones that we can go for. Um, weapon cooldown is quite nice. Weapon cooldown, I don't rate actually all that much here. It looks quite nice when you look at the actual stats in the top left. Anyone who's been playing Infinite Lagrange for any length of time, though, can tell you that those stats on the top left there are a little bit misleading. Ultimately, weapon damage, you'll see if I would go over these, a additional 2% weapon damage is a 98, whereas the 3% weapon system cooldown is only 52. Remember as well, we have that dive toss effect. We are going to be offloading as quickly as possible and then getting back to your carrier ship, whichever sort of ship is launching this. So I personally just go for the raw damage, especially since you've got raw damage going to be going through um, on that additional dive toss there, ignoring the armor. 
Basically, this doesn't fire many shots before it comes back, so it doesn't actually matter all that much if those shots are faster, or, you know, think of it this way, if you can only unload three shots at a target before you return, then I would rather those three shots did more damage than those three shots be slightly closer together, is my theory here at least. Of course, you can go with the whole thing that you want this in the air as little as possible, so a bit of additional flight, uh, a bit of additional firing time, so that it uh, returns back to its carrier faster. Yeah, okay, but I genuinely think the damage is the better, especially since that then goes into the Sympathetic Detonation and Explosive Ammo Enhancement, which of course give you the ability to crit um, with an additional 5% crit damage and the additional 9% crit damage from Explosive Ammo Enhancement. You do need this first one here so that you can get that chance to cause a crit, then you want to go for the extra crit damage and start stacking those. Finally, if you find that you're beginning to run out of slots, you can see here I'm on the last slot now. The one I would strongly go for is reducing the target selection time of the weapon by 6%. Um, basically, that is a really nice one to have because, again, this thing is going to come screaming off whatever ship launches it. It's going to race towards a target. You want it to be locked on before it reaches that target um, and then to offload its payload and get back as quickly as possible. And the damage that this kicks out is just more monstrous. If I were to come back all the way out and have a look here at some of the uh, stuff I've been doing here, if we have a look down, now you're going to have two different bits here. The one at the bottom there, again, the TE is the test versions that I got from the um, from the trading posts. These are not, those ones at the bottom there are not using my current tech points, which is disappointing because I actually have more tech points on them now than I did during the testing. But you can see here 36.85k from those two and a further 83.04k from the remaining ship. Now that is just an absolutely bonkers amount of damage that these things can kick out good survivability you can see these just took almost nothing sorry if we have a look at the damage and that taken here they take very little damage um in return they just have done bonkers good stuff and i am all here for it i've been waiting so long for jupiter industries to get a corvette finally they have one and it is now actually in competition there with the cellular defender for me Cellular Defender definitely is the one you're going to prefer if you're going up against smaller ships, but the S Levy 9 is an absolute beast when it comes to punching the big ships. So by late, mid to late game, when you're going up against battle cruisers and carriers, swap to the S Levy 9, pump in all of the stuff you can into this, and just watch as it rinses your enemy's fleet. It is beautiful, if ever so slightly alarming. Anyway, folks, those are my thoughts and opinions. Would love to hear your thoughts and opinions regarding this brutal little ship in the comment section down below. Some folks have already asked, have I been able to get hold of the Force Auxiliary yet? No, I have not. That is a big ship, a very big ship. I'm actually only on this server now, just about capable of building battleships. Um, so I wouldn't even be able to build it if I had it. Um, but hey, there we go. S Levy 9, Heavy Torpedo, Escort Corvette, wholeheartedly. If you can get your grubby little mitts on one of these th uh, blueprints, do it use it. It is just evil. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, folks. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Please hit like, happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.